What's happening guys, it's Shane here and today I am going to be doing a Mint budget app simple tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how to budget with the Mint.com app. It's very simple and easy to use. I'm going to show you a very simple method that's extremely easy to keep track of your finances which will allow you to save money, budget effectively, and take control of your life. And I'm going to be showing you a very simple way of using the Mint app where you don't have to spend hours and hours looking over spreadsheets. Pretty much everything is going to be automated. It doesn't take very long to set up and it will make your life very easy when it comes to keeping track of budgets, saving, etc. And I've tried a lot of methods over the years and this is by far the easiest method I have come across and it is the most effective method as well. And it's great for people who want to be financially responsible but they don't want to spend hours and hours hours keeping track of their budgets. And this is going to make it very easy for you to take control of your budget without spending hours and hours of boredom looking over spreadsheets that have complicated formulas and all that stuff that you just don't want to have to worry about. So without further ado, let's jump into the computer and get started right now. All right, guys. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to go to mint.com. Here it is right here, www.mint.com. And yeah, don't go to any other website, no fake websites, because you are going to be putting important information into here. And then we're going to go to sign up. You're going to want to punch your best email address in here, phone number, so that you can set up two-factor authentication, and then do a very, very good password here as well. And I already went ahead and I created a test account here, so I'll skip ahead to that. All right, guys, so you created your account and this is the first screen that you're gonna see right here. So right here, you're on the overview tab. This is gonna give you a general overview of all of the other tabs and it's a very useful page to be on. So as you can see here at the top, we got overview, transactions, credit score, bills, budgets, goals, trends, investments, and ways to save. Now on the overview tab, we're gonna go over a few things here. First of all, this is where you would link your bank account. Now, I didn't do that. I just linked a credit card for the purposes of this example to keep things simple. But you would link your bank account right here. Maybe you have several bank accounts. You can link all of them and it will keep track of your total cash that is in your bank account. Here you can link a credit card and that's what I did. And that's what I did here. You can link all of them. Here you can do any sorts of loans that you have. So car loan, uh, mortgage, student loans, anything like that, it will keep track of it. Here you can do any investments like Roth IRA, 401k, index funds, ETFs, mutual funds, anything like that that you have invested in. Maybe you just started and you're using Acorns or Robinhood, something like that, something very easy to use. You can link all of that right here in investments. And then down here you've got property. And this is a very interesting one because you can link a house and a house probably is going to be going up in value most likely. And it will automatically track the value of the house whereas if you get a car that's going to be going down in value and you can actually set it up to where it automatically tracks the value of a car so if you buy it for let's say twenty thousand dollars five years later it's only worth about ten thousand dollars it will automatically track that if you want it to and it will show you your net worth based off of that so it's very good for keeping track of your assets and your liabilities just with all of these alone it's tracking your net worth and 99% of it is completely automated once you set it up. Now it has some other very useful features on this home page. So as you can see here, it is upcoming bills. And normally you'd have maybe rent that you pay the first of the month, a car payment you pay on the 10th of the month, something like that. It'll show all of your upcoming bills right here. Down here, you're gonna have spending. And you know normally this would be a lot more. I only linked one credit card, but it'll show your spending from this credit card, different credit cards, and your bank account, etc. Now normally down here, it would actually show your credit score. I don't have that set up on this account, but it'll show your credit score right here. So you don't have to go through the process of applying to that. It just automatically does it every now and then for you. And then down here, you're gonna see that it shows your budgets and I'm gonna get into this a lot more later, but this is just a general overview. And then setting up goals and investments and ways to save where it basically gives you really good tips on ways to save and it's kind of like your own personal financial advisor but it's completely 
free. Now going up here, the tabs that you're gonna be paying the most attention to are going to be transactions and budgets. And we're actually gonna go ahead and start in the budgets tab. So let's click on that. Now, as you can see here, I actually already put in some of these budgets. Um, these are some of the most important ones and the ones that you should definitely start out with. So you've got auto and transport, utilities, entertainment, food and dining, um, groceries, as well as restaurants. So I like to separate those because I think that sometimes you can go out a lot and spend a lot more money than you know, just going out and hanging out with friends. And so I really do like to separate those two so that I can track that. And then you've got health and fitness. This might be a gym membership or something along those lines. And then mortgage and rent. Uh, another thing you could put in health and fitness is, you know, doctor's office visits and that sort of thing. Down here, it has everything else, which is basically the uncategorized categories. Now, just to show you how to actually create one of these budgets, I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. So let's say that you're a business owner and you have a lot of business expenses. We're going to go ahead and go to create budget, choose a category. And then I just like keeping things relatively general unless it's very, very important, then I'll break it down a little bit more. Some people like to get very, very detailed with it. I like to keep it relatively general. So I'd go to business services, click on that. And then I like to keep it every month generally. There's some things that would be every few months, like let's say you have an insurance payment that's due every few months for life insurance, you might put that there. And then the amount, I'm just gonna put $100 for the purposes of this example. And then you just click OK and bam, there it is, business services. Now you could actually link two different people to an account if you want. So let's say you have a significant other or a spouse. Um, what you'd wanna do is you'd probably want to separate both of them by your name. So you'd create an entertainment, you'd edit details, and then you'd say, you know, entertainment for Shane and entertainment for Jan. Now, as you can see here, there's this everything else tab at the bottom, and these are basically the ones that are uncategorized. Now, if you click on it, it's gonna show you shopping here. And over time, Mint, once you choose which category you want certain things to be in, it's actually very intelligent, it has artificial intelligence, and it will know what categories you want certain things to be in automatically. So you might have to spend maybe five or 10 minutes doing it the first few months. And then after a while, you might only have to spend maybe one or two minutes here and there uh, figuring out what category to put things in. It's extremely useful and it adapts to you over time. So let's go ahead and click on this just to see where it's at. And this was a purchase I made from Amazon and it automatically put it under the shopping category, which that is not one of the categories that I have. I like to get more detailed than just general shopping. So what I'm gonna do here is this was some food that I bought from Amazon. I think it was some beef jerky or something like that. So I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna go to food and dining and I'm going to pick groceries. So that one is going to go under groceries and now when we go back to budgets, you're gonna see that category has disappeared. Now when you use this for the first month, there'll probably be maybe 10 or 20 things down there, but as you start using it more and more, there'll only be a few things because most of the things it will know how to categorize automatically. Now as you can see, uh, these are different colors. So for instance, this one right here, entertainment is in the red, and that means that I've spent more than what I budgeted. My budget for it was $10 and I spent $15 on entertainment. These are completely theoretical numbers. Numbers. Obviously, we'd probably be spending more on entertainment. I just, for the purposes of the video, I set it to $10. But actually, I'll show you how you can edit here. Let's say I had a budget of $16. It would be in the yellow. So it's very close to going over my budget, but not quite there. But I'm going to go ahead and put it back to $10. Now, what you would want to do in this situation is you'd want to be like, okay, at the end of the month, I'm looking over my expenses so you can see where you're spending too much money, where your problems are, where you could maybe be spending a little bit more money potentially. And you would actually just click on entertainment and it would take you to all the purchases you've made. So this is where I bought like a, a candy bar and some chocolate and uh, some coffee at Rite Aid or something like that. Um, this one was where I advertised on Craigslist. I can't believe they're charging for you to advertise on Craigslist, but I, I did it just to test it out. But let's just say theoretically, 
Um, you know, you saw here that you were spending like $100 a month on uh, strippers and another $150 a month on beer. It would be very easy to identify that and you could see right away, okay, obviously my problem in the entertainment category is strippers and beer, so I should probably stop spending money on strippers and beer. Good plan, right? Another example of this might be like food and dining. So let's say this was an issue here. You could go to, you know, restaurants and you see, okay, I spent money at Woods Coffee on uh, avocado toast. And let's say you were spending, you know, 60% of your total budget on avocado toast. You might think to yourself, well, you know what? I might have an avocado toast addiction and uh, I might wanna stop spending so much money on it. You get the idea. Overall, it just makes it very, very easy for you to identify your problem areas and areas that you can improve on, and that is the secret to saving money. It's the secret to getting better with your finances because 99% of the people out there aren't even aware that they're spending so much money on just random stuff. So big things that you can improve here is you can minimize your cost of living by getting roommates, obviously, or or getting a mortgage and then renting out part of the house, that sort of thing. Uh, car payments are another huge cost that a lot of people see. You know, buying a car that's five to 10 years old is so much cheaper than buying a brand new car. I mean, it's just ridiculous. The insurance, the registration, everything is so much cheaper when you buy a car that's 10 years old and it doesn't depreciate, then you can just sell it for practically the same thing that you bought it for. Eating out and spending money on food all the time instead of just making stuff in crock pots and then, you know, preparing food for the whole week and then just taking you know your food to lunch and dinner and then just eating food for lunch or breakfast that you prepared already at home that saves so much money as well and then another big thing is just not making impulse purchases of toys and other things that you really don't need that is another big problem i see with people all the time so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this really quick and simple mint.com tutorial. I've been dropping some extremely valuable content about personal finance and just being successful in life in general. So definitely go check that out. Hit the like button, uh, hit the subscribe button, ring the little notification bell and comment down below any videos you might want to see in the future. And definitely check these videos out right now because these are going to help you tremendously. Hope you guys have a good one and bye for now.